welcome to the first of what I hope will be many painting tutorials. In this tutorial I will be doing a test piece for my East Illing Army, uh, which you can see I have primed in brown and zenithal highlighted in a bone colour. Um, we're going to start off with the Wasdaka Red for all the cloth areas on the model. Now the trick here is what I always tell people who, who ask about painting, I mean I'm by no means a golden demon winner or anything like that um, but I, I think I can I can put out a fairly decent army um, it's to be as neat as possible um, I always call it painting by numbers uh, try and stay in the lines paint the area that you should be painting try and not uh, go over into other areas it's not a big deal if you do because you can tidy it up but it is good practice to try and be as neat as you can because in this early stage when you're putting down your base colors um, it's so important to have a nice opaque um, good looking colour straight from the bat uh, if it's splashed everywhere it, it kind of de demotivates you uh, in a way so yeah try and keep it as neat as you can uh, try and keep your brush stro strokes in the same direction again this isn't always possible and thin your paints uh, as you can see here I'm going over with a second thin coat just to get that nice flat base colour to work from um, it will make my life so much easier when it comes to shading and highlighting if I have a nice flat color to go from again just making sure here on all the areas uh, there are no areas where the primed color is uh, showing through we want that nice uh, vibrant red from here we're going into eshing grey. Now there's not a lot of grey uh, on this model. There are his boots uh, and some tassels at the rear which we're going to paint in eshing grey. Eshing grey is a great colour because once you shade it with Null Noil or Agrax um, it does kind of become black and almost highlights itself. Uh, eshing grey is one of my favourite greys in the Citadel range. So you can see I'm just being as careful as I possibly can. I'm getting a nice point on my brush and I'm just picking out the areas that I want to paint. And although it wouldn't be the end of the world if I did go over onto the belt, I try my hardest not to. Um, again, this will just put you in good stead going forward if you get used to being as neat as possible. So get some grey on his shoes also. The shoes, I went for, the, for a grey colour rather than brown. I was going to go brown originally, um, but because the base is going to be brown, um, I thought I'd put the, the shoes as grey just to stand out. There's not a lot of flesh on these Easterling models. There's a little bit under the chin, under the helmet, uh, and the eyes that you can just see through the helmet. Now I do this now prior to painting the gold because if I do uh, smudge or make a little mistake, I can tidy it up when it comes to painting the armor gold, um, and it just makes life a lot easier rather than painting the gold and then trying very, very hard to get the flesh tone in that really small gap in the helmet so I do it at this stage just to make my life easier and again you can see I put down two thin coats rather than putting a big globule of thick paint and ruining all the detail of the eye socket going on to dryad bark now to do some of the leather the strapping and the belt um, I wanted this to be a slightly lighter brown um, again, I do love a Rhinox Hide Brown, it's so rich, uh, but also can be quite dark. And we've been having quite a dark grey, which I eventually want to look like a black. I just thought I'd go a bit lighter with the brown. Do make sure that you cover the whole area of the strapping, um, not just the piece that you can see. When it comes to sculpting, you do get sides, um, and it really does help the paint job if you make sure that you paint the sides neatly as well. So here I'm also painting the strapping, which is holding the armour on around the elbows and this is totally optional uh, you could have done this in the grey you could have done it in a, a lighter bone colour if you wished um, I just wanted to keep it as uniformed as possible and there is a little bit of the gloves area that you can see uh, and the strapping at the back of the knees which will also be done in brown now on to the armour Retributor arm is a great gold it covers so well um, I do thin it down uh, and again I will give it two thin coats just to get that nice flat colour um, but Retributor Armour covers so well straight from the pot um, but the detail on this model is really really fine all the different layers and links in the um, in the armour 
Um, I didn't want to obscure any of that by putting the paint on too thick. So I went over with two thinner coats, which worked really, really well. Again, the same with the straps here. I do make sure that I try and be as neat as possible and get around the edges of where the sculptor has sculpted the armor also, um, because these can be easily, easily missed. And although when you do put your shade on, uh, it does settle in these areas, uh, being neat at this stage really does make a big difference with the end result. It's most of the armor done and the uh, hilt to the sword. We're now putting some uh, gold down on the helmet, being very careful uh, not to paint over the eyes, uh, which we painted in flesh. And then also we have the shield. Now the shield is going to be gold and brown. Um, and as you can see here, the central part of the shield is gold and the outer rim. And then I will leave an area that's brown. And this is where the Rhinox hides comes in. Anything that's kind of a wood effect, um, we base in Rhinox hide. Again, we're thinning it down to get a nice smooth coat. Um, and because we're going over quite a light um, area, we will 100% have to do this in two thin coats and it's well worth the effort it's well worth that extra i mean we're talking minutes a couple of minutes extra to do two coats rather than one iron hand steel i use for the uh, blade on the sword it's the only part of silver on the model that, that i've chosen and i think just having the blade of the sword against the gold armor really does uh, make it pop and stand out As you can see, I'm using a painting handle here, uh, one from Citadel, but there's many uh, available. The Redgrass Games ones are great, um, and it's just easier to get around the model by flipping upside down to get into those hard to reach areas. So here I'm getting out the Gawthor Brown, uh, and what I'm doing is I'm going to try and create a grain in the wood on the reverse and the front of the shield by doing very thin lines. Um, it's well worth taking your time at this stage getting your paint nice and thin and a nice point uh, and practice on your fingernail uh, if you're a bit uh, unsure about being able to do it um, and it, like I said just taking that extra little bit of time makes a world of difference rather than having big thick fat streaks that don't look like wood um, just take your time get some really nice lines and once the wash goes over the top of this it will look great Going in there with the Bane Blade Brown. We're going to add to the detail of the wood grain again, just having those three tones in the wood make a big difference. And we're also going to do this at the front of the shield in a moment. And this is a great colour, it's a great highlight colour uh, for most of the browns in the Citadel range. Uh, and I also use this to highlight the edges of the strapping. The only difference with the front of the shield is that I run the grain in the opposite direction um, which I think just adds a nice contrast as you're looking at the model from a 360 degree view. Um, it kind of points out that it is two separate pieces of wood on the shield itself and I just think it looks great. So like I say here, still being very careful and keeping a nice tip on the brush. Uh, we're going to highlight the edges of the strapping and the belt um, and doing this at this stage prior to putting your wash on um, I think really just helps blend the two colours together once the wash goes on. It is really down to personal preference and to be honest I do sometimes do this prior to the wash and I sometimes do it after the wash. Um, it really is down to personal preference. I also nearly missed the little mask piece, the little brown area um, inside that very small area and uh, nearly forgot to highlight it. Whilst we're in there we will highlight the skin using Kislev flesh and when I say highlight this I do a highlight on the top kind of brow of the eye on both sides and there's a little bit in the bridge of the nose that you can just see and I just touched that also and as far as highlights go that is pretty much as far as you'd need to go on such a small area for a gaming standard model. 
We're back to the Rhinox hide and this is totally optional. Um, I pick out the eyes just with basically using the shape of the bristles to get a nice um, sort of line with tapered edges uh, for the eyes as you can see there. It's so small it's hardly noticeable um, but it does make a difference if you do it. First wash we're going to do is Agrax Earthshade and with this it's a case of thinning it down. I normally do two parts wash to two one part water uh, and I'm getting it all over the model with a larger brush to begin with. Um, I'm not worrying about the pooling at this stage. Um, my main thought here is get the wash all over the model um, and then I start to go back over the model uh, and take away some of the pooling uh, which we don't want. We really don't want pooling as it kind of causes what, what I call coffee stains. People call it different things but it's kind of uh, stains where it's pulled and it just doesn't look great. So I'll go back in afterwards and you can see me just wicking away uh, where it's pulled or moving it around and spreading it around so we, we don't get too stark a contrast between the shaded area and the base colour. It's well, well worth uh, doing this. Try not to be lazy at this stage because it can ruin a model when you do have those uber dark just patches that they just don't seem like they fit in anywhere um, so it's well worth taking the time uh, and mopping up those uh, pooled areas. On to Reikland Flesh Shade and again um, this isn't just for the flesh area I go over the whole model again um, the red tones in the flesh shade just really do sort of enrich the red uh, on the robes uh, and they make the gold just a little bit more uh, extravagant and it just just adds a nice nice hue to it. We're back to the original Wasdaka red now and we are highlighting all the areas uh, back on the cloth except for the recesses where the shade has settled. Um, this feels tedious at times um, but it also like you can see here is a good way uh, to go in and tidy up any places that you may have smudged and not realized um, but it makes all the difference if you go back in with the original base colour. Um, just taking your time, making sure it's nice and neat and it's well, well worth doing. Already here you can see that it's starting to take shape. We're getting a nice depth to the cloth. Um, it does look really, really good. Mix of Wasdaka Red and Wild Rider Red here um, for the final highlight. Uh, again, you could keep going right up to Wild Rider Red on, on its own if you wanted to. And again, some people go more of a flesh tone with the highlight. I really like the Wild Rider Red. I like the um, the feel of the cloth that it leaves at the end. So we're going over all the, the, the most raised areas here. Just sort of an edge highlight if you like. Uh, but some of the flatter areas of the cloth, uh, we do kind of go in a little bit wider with the highlight. But once this dries, when it goes on, it can look a little bit stark. But once it dries, it's a great highlight um, for this shade of red. I really, really like this. And it's kind of my go-to recipe for uh, like a standard red. Um, there is all, also a deeper red you can do, which I thought about doing on Easterlings. But I just thought this suited them a lot better with the gold. We're on to highlighting the gold now. And this is a stage that... I see, and I've, I've been done it myself where I've skipped it, I've just been quite lazy, but I can't say it enough. Highlighting your armour is huge, makes such a difference. And just taking that time, even though, especially on a model like this, it could feel soul destroying highlighting every little uh, plate on the armour and everything like that, it's well worth doing. So I do recommend that you take the time in doing it, um, because as you can see, there's a massive difference there already. Um, it's a, a step in the process, like I say, where if I was painting a hundred miniatures, I would probably just dry brush it. But going in with the brush, picking out those raised areas, picking out the tips of each plate of armour, um, it really does show through at the end. And I'm really happy with how it's turning out. A bit of an edge highlight on the shield, just adds a little bit of definition um, to the straight edges on the shield and the raised areas on the helmet also now there's a lot of edges on this helmet and it could be quite tempting just to sort of rush around it miss some of the edges or you know again like i say dry brush it you wouldn't get the same effect it would it would look okay 
but just taking the time with a, with a nice point on your brush, going in on the edges and highlighting each one individually really will uh, show that you've put the effort in at the end of the paint job. Again, don't forget the rear and don't forget the uh, raised areas on the helmet. I don't know what you'd call these, they're not ears obviously, um, but just taking your time, getting a nice contrasted highlight on there uh, to bring it up from that kind of burnished uh, gold colour that we've now got with the Agrax and the flesh tone wash uh, really does make a difference. Final highlight on the armour is a dry brush of Stormhose Silver using my very small Artis Opus dry brush. There's almost next to no paint on this brush and this is an optional uh, final highlight but for me it makes such a difference, such a difference. Um, and these brushes are great. If you've not tried them, uh, please do look into trying them, but they just look fantastic. Sticking with the silver paint now, I will edge highlight the blade of the sword. Again, I used to leave this out a lot and I'm still not as happy with the results that I get from highlighting um, blades. It just doesn't seem to have clicked as quickly as I would have, have liked it to, but I feel like I'm getting there slowly but surely. Um, but this is a, a stage again that not to miss. On a model where the sword is such a, a, a big part of the model, uh, you want to kind of emphasise the curves of the sword, the edges of the sword, um, and just make it shine. It's a good contrast on the gold. Use a contrast paint for the bases, as I do with most of my bases. I'm going in here with Wildwood over the whole thing. It gives me a very nice, even coverage of a dark brown. Um, and because it's a contrast, it does get in all them nooks and crannies. Whilst that's drying, I'll take this opportunity to highlight my uh, greys. So I go in on the boots, on the tassel at the rear. Uh, anywhere where I've put grey, the handle to the shield, uh, I'll highlight using this colour. Talon Sand is the next colour, which I'll be dry brushing on the base. And as you can see, I'm just going to whack this on. Um, nice and easy, making sure not to get any on the boots uh, and ruin the work that I've already started. And there'll be a few colours on this base uh, just to give it a little bit of depth. So we start off with a Talan sand and then from there we're into a Zandri dust, no messing around, straight back over the top. Again, just emphasising, take your time not to get it on the model that you've painted and put time into. Up to some Ushabti bone. And we're almost there. Um, it's kind of looking like a dirty desert style base. Uh, and then we'll finish off with some uh, just very, very light white, just to bring it up that little bit more. And here's the finished model. Uh, I finished it off with a little bit of flock just to add something of interest. And I think that looks great. I'm really happy with that. Uh, it was a test model. I wasn't really looking forward to painting these, but when I started to paint them and film this video, I really found myself enjoying it a lot. Um, I love the red and the red and the gold it's so iconic for Easterlings um, so yeah that's it that's all done I hope you enjoyed the video guys um, if you want to see more painting tutorials do let me know and I will see you guys in the next one